Hello there folks, Robin Nichols here with another cool Photoshop tip for you. Now today we're going to look at a sort of a mask uh, in order to help you out fixing up kind of tricky pictures because we know if we add, for example in this case we need to add some brightness to this picture so we can see the bird's face a little bit better so I can go the right way Robin, I can brighten it up, you know, I can do that but what happens of course the rest of the picture gets brighter so you're kind of thinking in the back of your mind well, what can I do here you'd have to make a selection. So we'd have to go and select the hoopoe in this case. This is a, a beautiful uh, uh, bird that you find in the sort of tropics and subtropics. Um, and you'd have to select it. So you'd have to draw a line around it, select it, and then edit just the bird. So that's going to take you 15 or 20 minutes. You may get it right. You may get it wrong. It may cause frustration. So here's an easy way of doing it. We need to have the layer palette available or visible on the desktop here. Uh, if you don't find the layer panel or you can't see it, simply go to the window menu and choose layers from the drop down menu here. Second thing we need is to duplicate the layer. And I do that simply by pressing Control J. If you're on a Mac, of course, it's Command J and it duplicates the layer. So I always say J for duplicate, yeah? Uh, you can, of course, just go to the layer menu and choose duplicate layer. I kind of don't do that simply because it then asks me another question. Anything that asks you what you consider a superfluous question is wasting your time. So it's much quicker to just go Control or Command J and you duplicate the layer. So now I have two layers. Nothing changed in the screen in front of us, did it? Simply because I've just got two prints, they're identical, and one is sitting in perfect register on top of the previous or the underneath one. So nothing changes. So what I need to do now is to use, again, levels or, in fact, I'm going to use a tool called. Um, Let's have a look here. Adjustments called Shadow and Highlights. Here we go. Shadows and Highlights under the Adjustments tool. This is, as the name suggests, it attends to Shadows and Highlights. Gee, that's a surprise. And you can see here, I didn't touch anything. It just adds 35%. That seems to be the Photoshop default. It's usually too much. Okay, it's usually way too much. But I'm thinking here, mm, that's before, that's afterwards. Well, let's go with that anyway. I'll say 35%. It's, it's greatly sort of, well, I'm thinking well, even a little bit more, you know, sometimes it's very tempting to go even more than that. So let's say 43%, okay. And we'll click okay. So now if you look at your layer palette, you can see that the top layer is probably a little bit brighter. If I turn the eyeball off, literally by clicking it, we go back to the previous shot, click it again, the eyeball comes back on again. So if you can see the eye, you can see the layer. If you can't see the eye, you see the layer underneath. Simple as that. So it's rather like just lifting that top layer up and looking at the photo underneath. All good and well, but of course, by brightening up the shadows here, the rest of the picture looks distinctly wishy-washy. So what I might do here is just try and put a bit more contrast back into the picture, especially if I press the right button, Robin, it's Control or Command L, and I'm just going to very simply try and make the, the dark areas just go a little bit darker and the light areas. So I'm, although I've lifted the light, sorry, the dark areas, the shadow areas using that tool, I'm thinking just put a bit more contrast into this, like this, just by squeezing the shadow slider and the mid-tone slider a little bit closer together, something like that. Yeah, so that's definitely a little bit better. I'm going to click OK. So I've modified it a little bit more. So the bird is certainly looking lighter, certainly looking a lot happier, and I could probably cheat a little bit by using Control or Command U I'm just going to increase the saturation of it, the color saturation. Just crank up the color a little bit. And look, everybody, I've found a new species. So you have to be careful not to change the species completely. Otherwise, the National Audubon Society will be getting your phone number. OK, so let's say we're happy with that up to a point. So the easy peasy, I mean, that wasn't very hard, was it? It took me two minutes to do that. We've brightened up the bird. We've reduced the, sh the intensity of the shadows. And now he's looking a little bit better. The rest of the picture is shot. So we need to basically keep the hoopoo, but we need to make all the surroundings of the bird as dark as that, or reasonably dark. So here's the easy bit. We use the child's eraser. I say child's eraser. It just looks like a, a kid's eraser, doesn't it? The little symbol here. Care must be taken not to use the background eraser or the magic eraser, because you can get yourself into serious uh, trouble using that, because that's just going to nuke everything off the board completely, probably including the bird as well. So we just use the eraser tool. Uh, all these brush-based tools in Photoshop have things called brushes, um, and you have a diameter. I can right-click whenever I'm floating over the photo, and a pop-out contextual menu allows me to choose all sorts of different shapes of brush. 
we just want a plain old fuzzy brush, something like that. Soft round one. Okay, so I've just double clicked it, and there it is. If you want a bigger brush, of course, you can go back in here and you can choose size, you know, a bigger brush. I always use a thing called a keyboard shortcut, and I'm pressing the right hand or the left hand square bracket. Square brackets, as you may or may not know, are next to the P key on the keyboard. Uh, finally, before we start, is the opacity is a description of the speed or the efficiency of the eraser brush. Okay, so just think of it as speed. Uh, if I ever had the chance, I'd rename that as speed. So if 100%, it's going to go 100%, click and drag, and you can see mysteriously the picture begins to get darker. To show you what I'm doing, I'll go down and turn the bottom layer off by clicking the layer visibility. Now normally, if I hadn't done anything to this hoopoo shot, you wouldn't see anything, any difference at all, because of course the top layer is obscuring it. But because I've already erased a little bit of the pixels in the top left-hand corner of this top layer, when I turn it off, you think, oh, okay, a checkerboard tablecloth's appeared. Checkerboard means there's nothing there. So because there's nothing there, you can see the original darker version underneath. Very, very simple. So it just allows me to very quickly get an idea of what I'm doing here, or apparently get an idea of what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm just going to do a very rough thing. So you can see what I mean about this as being you know, a relatively easy process because we don't have to make selections. We don't have to get into feathering, modifying our selections, and layer control, uh, saving the selections as Photoshop files in channels, all that kind of stuff. It's relatively simple. So as I get closer to uh, the bird, I'm going to zoom in on the bird here. Isn't it a beautiful bird? Uh, I'm going to use a slightly smaller brush, and I'll just sort of trim in there a little bit like this. You know, so again, this is a fairly quick example to show you, uh, but you'll get the idea. All right. Now, as we're getting kind of pretty much close to finishing time, I'm going to just turn that background layer on again. So now you can see in my layer palette, both the eyeballs are visible. So we've got the hoopoo, who is now surrounded by a checkerboard tape tablecloth. He's going, oh, I'm on my own here. Okay, and we're just looking at the jungle is in the original background layer. To prove that to you, I can turn that off, turn him on again. All right, so I'm going to turn that layer off. There's a little bit of sky here that I need to erase. I think he's scrubbed up very well. So this technique, you know, is fantastic because it works on a good range of pictures. You know, like all these techniques, it's not going to work on every photo. But this was just thought, you know, gross underexposure, and it was a shame, and I didn't want to mess around with selections. It's going to take me two or three minutes to fix up. I think uh, I've been talking for about five minutes, so, so that's a five-minute fix-up. So, you know, a pedant might say, oh, it looks a little bit suspiciously bright around by the tail area, and you'd be right, so I could go in there, and I could spend 20 minutes just uh, tidying up my selections. But with, even without being incredibly pedantic about it, I think you can agree with me, that is a far improved wildlife shot compared to that. And all I've done is just done this very quick erasing technique, like that, without the need for any selections or any masking. So very fast, very effective, and I think pretty easy to do. So have fun. Now, when we finish, of course, if I save this, it's going to force me to save it as a Photoshop file. Why? Well, because I've got two layers. If I really want to, I can save it as a JPEG file, and what will happen is those layers will squash together. But it's always a good idea to save it as a Photoshop file, i.e., keep those layers in, because maybe tomorrow when you get up and you have a look at this picture, you go, uh-oh, I don't like that at all. I want to adjust the bird tones again. If you've squashed these two layers together, you can't. So you have to go back and reinvent the wheel, as it were, by redoing what I've just shown you. But by keeping the Photoshop layers available and uncompressed or unflattened in this document, you get a fantastic sort of result, and you maintain its editability. So uh, on another time, for example, I can go back and use my layers here to add a little bit more contrast back into the beast here. Actually, you're probably <laughs> making the face goes dark as it was before, you know, something like that. So you can continue fine-tuning it, there we go, depending on your requirements.